Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthfication Chronicles, and this is something that came to me as I was driving around this afternoon, and this is a local radio station show that comes on and he live streams it, so always interesting to listen to him. His name's Casey Hendrickson, and as he was talking, of course, he started talking about Mayor Pete. Well, Pete Buttigieg and Casey Hendrickson kind of go back a little ways because they've been back and forth at each other and he's interviewed Mayor Pete several times and you know it's been one of those things they're not the most friendly when they dis when they talk so um, I wanted to hear what he had to say because he was talking about Mayor Pete and he interviewed the head of the South Bend FOP and I thought hmm what's going on there was this incident back I think it was in June sometime there was a white officer who shot a black man. And, you know, from what I hear, he was justified in doing it. And that's going to be the position you're going to hear here because he talks to the actual head of the FOP. So I wanted to bring this to you so you can get a little bit of a perspective on Pete Buttigieg because, yeah, you know, he presents himself to be so nice and so well thought out and reasoned and everything. But, you know, he's just like all the rest of the Democrats. And I'll show you in just a minute. So here's the first clip that I wanted to share with you. Ryan O'Neill and Harvey, as we were pointing out, the evidence uh, right now seems pretty clear that Sergeant O'Neill acted appropriately that night. Unfortunately, a man lost his life, but the officer appears to have had no choice whatsoever. Uh, Sergeant O'Neill has now resigned. But then the mayor of South Bend, who should have the backs of his police department until any wrongdoing is proven, comes to town. And what was the private reaction of officers when they saw Mayor Buttigieg marching with people who were literally holding up signs that said cops and Klan go hand in hand? Right. So it's just demoralizing. Uh, officers are are angry. Uh, they're, uh, I've spoken with uh, more than 20 officers that are uh, looking to either resign, retire, or find other employment. Um, actually, just with uh, 10, 20 minutes ago, I received information that two uh, resignation letters were turned in uh, just yesterday and today. Um, so that's two more. So now we're uh, five in just uh, a couple of weeks, I think. Um, and uh, plenty more apparently uh, are looking to do so as well. So we have five um, officers just, that are looking to resign from the police force, and we have up to 20 who are discussing it currently? Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, do what? What is the reason? Are most of them younger officers or older officers? In you know, obviously Mayor Buttigieg is not going to be around for much longer. So, what's the reason? Is that they they just don't trust that the future administration uh, would also have their back, or do they just not want to be involved in policing at all? Well, it, it's hard to say. There's a you know lots of you know those couple of reasons I pointed out. Um, you know. Certainly, officers being shot at is not something somebody who wants to go home and tell their spouse, um, you know, uh, uh, or or not come home, you know, sadly. Um, so, uh, policing in general is is being you know has been tougher uh, in the last uh, several years, uh, especially with the uh, recent criticism and, and whatnot. So, um, yes, with the with disparaging remarks uh, here in South Bend. Uh, I think that's pushing guys to um, other municipalities um, you know, that, that aren't going to treat them that way. What was the point of Mayor Buttigieg sending the department a bunch of pizzas a week or two ago? What was the point of that? Uh, I, re I really don't know. Um, uh, those officers didn't eat those pizzas, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they left the building and went somewhere, but uh, not at this police department. Interesting. Yeah, we had some officers tell us about that, and then uh, I think it was a few days after we had heard about it, we started seeing that it was picking up national attention as well, uh, that yeah. he was doing it. And of course, the FOP said we want apologies, not pizzas, which is a great line, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have... We, we have want support, uh, yeah. most of all. Well, and I think, I think the community understands how important the police department is. Uh, so yeah, he sent them pizzas. Mm hmm. Well, you know, this has gone back and forth. And since I live fairly close to South Bend, 
I've been kind of keeping some tabs on it, although, you know, I try not to keep too many tabs on South Bend. But uh, even Fox News has been reporting on things, and they reported on this. The South Bend police call out Judge for sending pizza rather than an apology after race comments. And this was back on July 12th. Now, I must have missed it back then, actually. But I wanted to show you this because this, actually, there's a video here, and the video has really nothing to do with it. And so I wasn't really going to show it to you, but this particular screen I wanted to show you because check it out. This is where Pete Buttigieg is 0% black support. I mean, he's taken a big nose dive, especially with the blacks. Now, South Bend has a good sized population of blacks. And there has been some race tension back and forth for years. So it's not like it's something new. But he's not really been able to, uh, you know, calm it down any, I don't think. And it seems to be just about as bad as it was. But yeah, Pete Buttigieg, not looking good with the black population. Which, you know, I kind of find it interesting that the old white guy here is at 31% and has the most black support. I just think that's kind of interesting, isn't it? But that's all right, because see, I don't have a problem with black people deciding on their own who to support. I think that is a very good thing, and I respect them being intelligent enough to make their own decisions. Whereas, you know, the idea that you must vote for someone because they are, and then fill in the blank, black, white, gay, woman, man, I don't care. I look at their policies and it's their policies that I'm going to support or not when I vote. And definitely, I mean, Pete puts on an air when he's like, you know, being on television or whatever. And it makes it seem like he's very smart and he knows all the answers and he's just one of those guys. And then you start finding out when you actually ask him questions that he's no different than a lot of these others in the Democrat Party that are running for president right now because he believes exactly the same things they do. Yep, the Green New Deal, all of this stuff. So it, it you know, he just comes across and looks more sane than the others do. Anyway, this article down here is actually about that situation. Harvey Mills, the president of the FOP Lodge, which is who Casey Hendrickson was talking to, said last week while Mayor Buttigieg continued to run a presidential campaign in which he falsely implies that South Bend police officers are racist, he refused to apologize. And that is this video right here, which I'm going to play for you. It's not very long. Last week, while Mayor Buttigieg continued to run a presidential campaign, in which he often falsely implies that South Bend police officers are racist, he refused to apologize. Instead, he sent us pizza. Our officers are brave men and women who put their life on the line for our community each day. We ask that instead of delivering pizza, the mayor delivers some respect for what police officers do and drop the politics. If this was a lame attempt to apologize to South Bend police officers, it didn't go over very well. The Fraternal Order of Police supports accountability and the facts. Unfortunately, the mayor didn't wait for any of the facts before condemning Sergeant Ryan O'Neill for defending himself. The evidence shows Sergeant O'Neill defended himself only after a convicted felon armed with an 8-inch hunting knife charged at him and ignored repeated commands to drop the knife. As always, the links will be down below. But anyway, yeah, that's what he did. You know, he ended up sending them pizzas. Oh, they were not happy. No, 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 no. And again, this was back July 12th. So anyway, I just wanted to point something out to you. This was very interesting, I thought. I went into YouTube, you know, the main page, and I typed in the search Fox News. And the first two entries that it gives me are MSNBC and CNN. Oh, I mean, really? This is how they're doing their searches. They have set it up so when you search, you end up getting things that are 
from the authoritative sources first. And even Fox News will be shuffled down further. And then, of course, you know, after that, you end up getting other things. But like even sometimes when you put in the direct exact title, it's it's very interesting. And especially Mark Dice was one that's been getting hit with that a lot. And if you put in, you can like put in the exact title of one of his videos and chances are it won't be until way down here at the bottom, if at all on the first page. I mean, it's really bizarre. So, you know, I've done it with a few of mine. I don't think I'm high enough up yet on the food chain. Although sometimes that does happen, especially with a few of them that, you know, YouTube doesn't necessarily like. So anyway, I wanted to also show you this one because I'm just going to show you a very little clip of this, but I'll leave the link down below if you want to watch the whole thing. It's only, uh, what, six and a half minutes. But yeah, there was this town hall after the shooting and Pete steps in and instead of calming things, I think he put gas on the fire. It did not go well for Pete. Let's put it that way. It did not go well. But anyway, here's the clip of that. Mayor Pete Buttigieg facing some angry constituents in his hometown of South Bend this weekend. While taking a break from the campaign trail, the 2020 Democratic contender held a town hall where he came under intense scrutiny from residents who blamed him for not being president enough, present enough, excuse me, after the deadly shooting of a black man by a white police officer. Sure. Sure. So, if, if everyone Sir. can just, we're going to allow him to speak if everyone can just calm down. Yeah, so I thought you'd enjoy that. But then the rest of this was kind of interesting, their commentary on it. And so I thought I'd leave that for you. Here was another one that Fox News had, and this was July 23rd. This just came out. And it is kind of a repetition of what's already been said that, yeah, they are serious. The police are not happy with their situation. And over Mayor Pete's time, it's not gotten better. It's gotten worse. And so the police are really struggling to try to keep people in the force because, you know, if you're not going to be treated very well, there are lots of other jobs that you can make more money at and they're much safer. So, you know, there's a lot we're asking of our policemen and then they come off and do this. And, you know, he, what really bothers me is when they don't wait for all the information to be in. Now, I will say that the officer had a body cam and he didn't have it on. And that is a huge question for me. Why didn't he? I don't know. I don't know what the situation is on that. But the guy he was stopping had an eight inch long hunting knife. And there's this thing called the 21 foot rule. I don't know if you know about that. I just learned about it. But evidently the 21 foot rule is something that is kind of taught in police forces and everything that if you're in a confrontation with someone and they are within 21 feet of you and they have a knife, then you need to be very careful about that because it's possible for them to cross that distance before you can react and pull your gun out of the holster and shoot. So that's what the 21 foot rule is. It's not a rule rule, but it's usually considered as pretty accurate. I thought it was very interesting down here though, that it was talking about the accuracy of fire at close distances because I, you know, guess I'd never thought of this. And if you like statistics and things, there's some little details in here that might interest you. And this is what it says. I'm going to take that off because it's easier for me to read without the blue. The average officer in static firearms qualifications, non-timed standing and shooting without moving, can hit the 9 to 10 rings far more often than not from the 5-yard line. However, research of actual OIS incidents has shown that officers can only accurately hit their moving assailants 14% of the time in life or death situations from distances of only 2 to 10 feet. On the other hand, assailants were able to successfully engage and hit officers 68% of the time within those same distances. 
So the psychophysiological components of actual gunfighting play a critical role in an officer's survivability within relatively close distances. Now, as I understand it, this officer only shot twice and one time he missed him. So he hit on the second time, and it was a fatal shot, which is why there's all this hullabaloo. Uh, but Officer Neil fired two shots, I believe. Um, but, yeah, so we're trained to only fire uh, if, you know, necessary, obviously, and then only until the, the threat stops. And, again, there was no backup there, so using a less lethal option is not the right course of action because if that fails, then the officer is in serious jeopardy of his life. Um, that, that's right. There's plenty of training. We train uh, quite frequently on, uh, you, you may have heard of the 21-foot rule. Correct. If, uh, if the suspect's uh, within 21 feet of you holding the knife, you can't draw your weapon uh, faster than he can get to you with the knife. Yeah. It's um, And for people who don't know that, they need to go look that up. I know that we've talked about it quite a bit on the program, but, you know, it's there's plenty of videos with professionals kind of explaining yeah. this and showing there's, yeah. There's a video on our uh, FOP webpage as well. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Now, uh, we have, I believe, somebody identified the knife as being theirs and that it was stolen from their vehicle. Is that correct? That's what I understand. Okay. So we, we now have a call to law enforcement of somebody breaking into vehicles. We have Officer O'Neill arriving on scene, finding somebody matching that description. That person is bloody, has a purse in one of their pockets, which obviously does not belong to them and now has an eight-inch hunting knife that has been identified as being stolen from one of those vehicles. And that person had the knife raised above their head and approached Officer O'Neill before he drew his weapon and fired two shots in a controlled fashion. Certainly was not panic. So now you've get, you got the mayor of South Bend, Pete Buttigieg, who's running for president of the United States, just in case anybody hasn't heard about that. And he flies all the way back. He cancels an event uh, with the, the Democratic uh, National Committee. He flies all the way back to South Bend. And now he's doing this media tour, Harvey, where he's basically saying that all policing and the criminal justice system as a whole are now rooted in racism. And he's speaking in front of new graduates and he's lecturing them on racial tensions and, and how to appropriately conduct yourself as an officer. And none of those people have done anything wrong. Kind of tell everybody right. that's when the FOP started, started, you know, pushing loop. back. on. But, you know, it was one of those situations where the guy has a rap sheet a mile long and everything. So... I kind of think he was justified. And again, you know, I can't say that definitively, but it appears that that was the situation. Anyway, I will include to a link to the FOP's Facebook page because on June 24th, which was shortly after it happened, like I said, it happened back in June sometime and I can't remember exactly when that was, but they put out this press release and I thought this was good and wanted to share it with you. So here is the press, whoops, sorry. So here's the press release that they had. In the United States of America, we follow the sacred legal principle of the presumption of innocence. The executive board of the Fraternal Order of Police Lodge No. 36 stands firm in the representation of its 350 plus members in our support for Sergeant O'Neill. And that was the sergeant who shot the guy. Until a thorough and complete investigation is done, we shall not waver. The investigation is being performed by an independent entity, Metro Homicide Unit, with no involvement from the South Bend police officers who serve with them. This membership asks that we all keep everyone involved in our thoughts and prayers through this tragedy. For mayor and presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg to make disparaging remarks such as all police work and all of American life takes place in the shadow of racism is divisive. Mayor Buttigieg's focus on this incident is solely for his political gain and not the health of the city he serves. Mayor Buttigieg's comments have already and will continue to have a detrimental effect on local law enforcement officers and local enforcement officers nationwide. Mayor Buttigieg's comments and actions are driving a wedge between law enforcement officers and the community they took an oath to serve. Mayor Buttigieg has in no way unified the community. Mayor Buttigieg continues to only focus on one incident and one family. Buttigieg has yet to comment on the largest mass shooting in the recent history of South Bend or on one juvenile killing another earlier in the week. 
Buttigieg's focus on one family has left several others ostracized. He has not spoken to the families involved with the Kelly's pub shooting, the South Bend Police Department family, or the family of Sergeant O'Neill, all of whom are suffering greatly. The accountability level of officers has increased exponentially in the last several years. The department's duty manual has undergone restructuring and is at or above national standards in all areas. Discipline for those officers who violate policy has been swift and firm. The number of suspension days, officers terminated, and those who have chosen to resign has increased due to these changes. With the revamped promotional process, the discipline not only affects the officers in their paycheck, but their ability to promote or take any other position on the department, all due to the high accountability level. The members of this lodge and the officers of the South Bend Police Department have been and continue to be committed to building trust between its officers and the community. South Bend Police Department offers a food pantry for community members in need, cops coffee conversation, popsicle patrol, police athletic league, multiple summer cookouts, South Bend PD, trick or treat, Santa's officers, the annual corn roast, Scholarship motorcycle ride and disc golf are examples of the commitment we have to the community in building relationships. This list, while long, is a small example of the commitment our officers have, and it does not include the individual efforts like changing tires, adjusting child seats, and playing basketball with the community. In conclusion, the members of the FOP number 36 plead with the community in the wake of this difficult time that we come together. In a short time, Mayor Buttigieg will no longer be the leader of this great city. However, the South Bend Police Department and the residents of South Bend will still be here. If we are to grow and change for the better, it will require us to set political agendas aside and simply come together. So that's their statement. I think they said it well, and they definitely are not happy with Mayor Pete. He's got a difficult time ahead of him with just his own city, let alone trying to run the entire nation. So I don't think Mayor Pete's going to be in the running for much longer, especially if he only has 0% black support. It's just not going to happen in the Democrat Party. So anyway, that's what I've got for you on this one. I wanted to share it with you, and I'll put all the links down below so you can follow them and you can share them as you see fit. And so I want to thank you for stopping by and I'll see y'all later.